almost all of us have used a browser, right? If you're watching this, you're probably doing it through a browser. So you know what a browser is. You've heard of Microsoft um, Edge, you've heard of Internet Explorer, you've heard of Chrome, you've heard of Firefox and probably many others. But have you ever wondered what exactly a browser does? What's the point of even having a browser? Now, one of the best ways to understand what a browser does is to actually see what web pages look like in action without the browser's help. And the way to do that, and I'm just going to show you that, the way to do that is just to go to any website. Let's go to flipkart.com, right? And all you have to do is press control plus U. That's control plus U to see the source of a web page. If you do that, you get the entire source of the web page. This is what web pages actually look like, right? They're a bunch of text. That's all they are. They're a bunch of text and images. And what the browser does is the browser is a rendering machine. It's able to take text that is given to it from any computer in the world. And it's able to convert that into an actual website that somebody can use and interact with. So a browser is a rendering machine, right? And different browsers in the past used to render differently. So that's why whenever you made a website, it used to look different in Internet Explorer and then it used to look different in Chrome. And the reason for that is all of them have their own rendering rules. They have their own rendering engine. But today, most browsers render similarly. It's actually to help web designers out there and web developers out there so that they don't have to make exceptions for each browser. And today, when we, whenever we make a website, it's going to look the same, more or less the same across different browsers. Right. So what we are going to learn is we're going to learn how to write this text that the browser can interpret and translate into something that looks and feels good to a user. So let's get started. There are two languages that we are going to use to wrangle that browser to to send information to a browser. Now, one of those languages is HTML. Let me write that down. Right, we're going to use this nice little board here. So this is HTML. And then there's another language we're going to learn called CSS. Let's see if, okay. CSS. Now, you've probably heard of these two. And HTML stands for hypertext markup language, CSS stands for cascading style sheets. But that doesn't give anything away. Right? how do you actually how, how do you see HTML and CSS? And I've been thinking and you know, I do a lot of homework and groundwork in trying to teach you guys and deliver this content to you in a way you'll understand. So I've been thinking what is the best way to explain HTML and CSS? And here's the best way that I could come up with. HTML is a bunch of boxes, right? So in an HTML page, you could have a bunch of different boxes. So we can have box one, we can have another box, box two, and then we can have some text inside each of these boxes. So you can say, well, my name is, my name is, right? You can have some text inside these boxes and that's what HTML does, right? It allows you to, to create boxes and put text inside the boxes and do a little more funky stuff, which we'll come to later. But this is the essential idea. Remember that you can do some more interesting things with HTML, which is you can create a larger box, right? And you can have other boxes that kind of lie, you know, let me just show you. So you can have a box here. And then you can have another box that sits inside this box. So you can have nested boxes. So HTML basically talks about boxes. Now, one interesting thing about HTML boxes is they always stack below each other. HTML boxes um, by default can't be set next to each other. So you can't have a situation like this in HTML. You just can't, right? And for us to do something like this, we need to use a way to style these boxes. But it, by default, when you create a box next to another box, the box goes to the next uh, row, right? So if I created another box, it would go all the way to the bottom of this, right below this. Let's just make this a little smaller. Yes, so if we had this box, when we create the next box, it would go right below instead of sitting to its side. So that's what CS, uh, HTML is about, right? It's a bunch of boxes and text inside the box. Now, how do we actually style the box? What if we want to make a one of the boxes in HTML green in color? What if we wanted to give it a border? What if we want to make the box bigger or larger? What if we want to make boxes stack next to each other instead of one below the other? Because the default behavior of HTML is to stack boxes one below the other. Well, that's where your best friend CSS comes in. CSS has a bunch of rules that you can use to design these boxes. 
And the reason it's called cascading style sheets is because a lot of the rules can be stacked on top of each other. So if I wanted to give some properties to this box and I wanted to give some of the similar properties to this box, I can use, I can reuse a lot of the CSS. So let me give you an example, right? Let's say I'm going to name this box and I'm going to name the box, let's say box one, right? Let's just assume this box had a name, right? So let's just call this box one. What I can do in CSS is I can say box one, right? And I'm not going to, you know, use any of the CSS syntax here. I can just say, well, for box one, I want the color of text to be blue. I want, uh, you know, a border, right? And I have some properties for the border. Let's just say I want it to be, you know, green and thin, right? So you can have properties like this in CSS that allow you to actually give some attributes to these boxes in HTML. And immediately what happens to the boxes is well, you immediately have, uh, you know, a green thin border and you can make the text a different color. Let me just show you what that looks like. Yes. So this is essentially what will end up looking like and HTML and CSS, people think you have to write them in separate files. You don't have to, you can write HTML and CSS in the exact same file. And in this episode, we're actually going to do a little bit of HTML and CSS just to show you what those files are like, right? So let's create a new folder. Let's just go to the desktop. Let's create a new folder. Let's call it my first website. All right. And let's enter this. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to right click, click on new, and we're going to click on text document, right? And we're going to double click this text document. I'm going to go to file, save as, and I'm going to save this as index.html, right? All HTML files have the .html extension. That's how a browser knows this file is HTML, right? And instead of text documents, I'm just going to save it as all files, right? If I save it as text document, then, you know, Windows automatically adds an index.html.txt. We don't want that happening. So index.html. And as you can see, an HTML file has been created. Now I'm also going to save this again, and I'm going to create a CSS file here. So I'm going to call this style.css. You can name it whatever you want, but I'm, I like to use the word style.css. Save, and you know I can just delete this text document now. I'm just going to delete it. Now you have to understand this, right? The internet is basically a bunch of computers connected together. When you go to a URL, suppose you go to www. Uh, google.com, you're actually going to an IP, right? You're actually going to some sort of IP. And if you guys don't know what IP is, it's basically the representation of what the location of a computer is. So your IP could be 68.131.52.139, right? That doesn't matter. But the point is when you direct your browser or you point your browser to that URL, it goes there and it opens the file directory of that URL of that computer. Right. And what happens is it immediately looks for a file called index.html. That's the root file. It's called index.html. All browsers will look for the index.html file in with some exceptions. And we're not going to go through those exceptions, but in most static websites, the browser will be looking for a file called index.html. That's where the magic begins. Right. So, so let's just open this in a particular, um, editor that I use, we're not going to use notepad. It's not very powerful. It's not useful either. So you can just go to your browser, open a new tab and look for sublime text. I like using sublime text. It's free. You can just download it for windows. I have it open here, but if you guys don't have it, you can download it. Um, it's, it's completely free, All right? So, so let's do this. We can open both our files index and you can just drag it into sublime. Right. So I can just actually, I can just open the file and do that index. Right. So we've opened index.html. Obviously there's nothing inside it. One of the things you can do with sublime instead of you manually opening every file is you can actually open a folder. So you can go to file, click on open folder, and we're just going to open this folder called my first website. And I'm just going to select this folder and a new sublime window is open. I'm going to close the old one. Right. And as you can see, there are two files, which is index.html and style.css, which form the basis for the tutorial that we're going to go through in the next few episodes. So catch you on the next one. Bye-bye.